is National Adoption Month, and I am joined by Marla Allison, the Director of Full Circle Adoptions in Northampton. You're also an attorney and a licensed independent clinical social worker, as well as Aaron Lasker, uh, who adopted a little boy who's now three years old. And you're also the Director of Resolve of New England, who helps couples uh, facing infertility. Thank you uh, so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. So, Aaron, I want to start with you. Uh, you were not able to conceive, and you and your husband decided to consider adoption and had a successful adoption. Tell me about your story. So, we went through a few years of infertility and um, decided that adoption was our path. And we did research and um, found a wonderful agency, Full Circle Adoptions, um, and went through the home study process. And um, we are thrilled to have our our child, our son, Ian, who will be three in January. And so this was a domestic adoption? It was, yes. Um, actually local here uh, in the state. And um, it, we've got a fully open adoption and we get to see um, Ian's birth family, which is wonderful. So not only do we have a son, but we also have an extended family, which is fantastic. Now, Marla, most of the adoptions you were telling me are domestic, which I think might surprise some people. I know we had that, or we saw that ban in Russia, which uh, probably broke a lot of families' hearts. So what is going on uh, in the adoption world? What are the options for people? Carolee, there are three main options. One is certainly adopting through the state. That's a wonderful option through the Department of Children and Families. Um, a second option is certainly international. The numbers have waned considerably over the years for a number of reasons. Um, one is the regulations of the Hague uh, Treaty. Um, another is some of the inter-country political issues, right. as with Russia. Um, but for a number of reasons, there are many fewer international adoptions happening. And then the other option is domestic through private agencies, such as Full Circle. Uh, this offers uh, both expectant parents and adoptive parents a chance to, as Aaron was saying, build a sense of extended family for the child over the years. And can you walk us through the process? I know you were talking about a home study. You know, what, what's the first step a couple would take? Um, well, you know, when a couple comes to us, uh, you know, Aaron and Matt came for an orientation. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, sat and they listened to me talk about the process from beginning to end. It takes about two hours. There's no charge for that. We want people to have this information and about all their different paths. And the home study is as much educational as it is evaluative. We want people to understand about openness. We want people to understand about transracial adoption. We want people to um, anticipate how they'll talk with their children about adoption. And a lot of that is covered in what's called a home study. And a small part of that process is seeing if the home is safe for a child. And we make recommendations for right. safety. Then after that is the matching process. And so Aaron and Matt put together a beautiful profile with their picture and pictures of their family. And then a very heartfelt letter that would be read by expectant parents considering families. And then the expectant parents say, and I remember in this case, <laughs> the expectant parents said, they're for us. We'd like to meet them. And so Aaron and Matt came to our office, as did the birth parents. And they had this conversation, and these conversations are so poignant. Mm -hmm. It's like, will you care for my child? Right. And, you know, Aaron and Matt are saying, yes. Right. And here are my dreams. I want to make sure that so-and-so is given a chance for gymnastics. Right. I'm <laughs> on it, you know. And so they build the dream of what this kid's childhood is going to be like, and then they talk about contact later, too. And what is the, the length of time it would take for a couple, and, and what are the costs involved? Because I'm sure a lot of people sure. worry about both. Sure. Yeah. Um, domestic infant adoption can range anywhere, it's a lot of money, thirty to 50000 mm -hmm. Agencies don't get rich with that. There are a lot of players, there's attorneys, there's clinical social workers, there are fees for paternity tests and so forth. So we break down every single cost. Luckily, there are also opportunities for grants and foundations um, support. So for example, there's um, uh, an organization called HelpUsAdopt.org gives substantial help to families. And then um, there's also a foundation that really likes Full Circle's work, and they've said, Marla, call us up when a family needs some financial help and we'll help. So that's a, a really delightful opportunity. So there, there are costs, but then there are opportunities for assistance as well. 
Okay. Um, then you asked about how long. Right. And in general, we measure from the point that the Dear Birth Mother letter has been written, you know, with the mm -hmm. profile, the pictures, and text, to the point that there's a confirmed match. And we say that's about six to 18 months. Can go longer, can go shorter, but that's a, a good, you know, variable range. Okay, Aaron, I, I wanted to touch on a point that we had talked about uh, before we started the interview, and that was how long you had to wait before it was official. Obviously, a birth mother has the right to change her mind when she's holding that baby. Uh, you had to wait 10 days, which okay. maybe in, in normal everyday life, okay, 10 days flies, but that's a long 10 days when you're waiting. Uh, describe what you went through. Actually, we, we um, it, it was fantastic. We were glad to have that opportunity to um, spend that time with our son, um, and knowing that there was the risk that there could have been a change. But I would never have uh, forgiven myself if the adoption went through and I missed out on those 10 days. So it was a risk that was worth taking um, to make sure that I had that time. And if you were to advise a parent who says, gosh, you know, but I, I don't know if I could go through that. I don't know if I, if I could really put myself out there and, you know, and fall in love with this baby and then have to deal with that. But, but what would you say to them? I would say they need to follow their heart. I mean, for some people that probably would be too much, but for my husband and I, it was so invaluable um, so that we could spend that time with our son and build that foundation for the bond that we now have as his parents. Um, and, and having the guidance of Marla and her team to make sure that that was the right decision for us, we, we talked about it at length, and um, it was important for us to, to have that time. And Marla, what would you recommend uh, to couples, again, considering this and, and who are going down this road? Um, I think two, oh, two things. One is the, the normal period of time is actually four calendar days after the baby's birth. In Aaron and Matt's situation, there was an additional federal, federal law that right. is not often involved. Right. So I just want to yeah, clarify that. Was a good that. Clarification, yeah. Yes. Um, the other thing I would say is faith is a really important part of this process. People get hopeless when they uh, go through infertility, and you as the head of Resolve know this as well. And part of my job sometimes is sitting with people and saying, this is a hard moment. Let's keep moving forward together, and your dreams will be realized. That's some great advice. Aaron and Marla, thank you so much for joining us.